everybody, welcome back to the Beach Bum Bookworm. I am Tiffany. Today is completely different than what I usually do. Obviously, I have a guest. This is my husband, Kevin. Most of you have seen him around, but if you haven't, he is back in the flesh. <laughs> so, he was gone out of town. We used to do these videos, and now we are back with Universal Yums. If you don't know what Universal Yums is, oh my goodness. You get a different snack box from a country each month. So this kind of, we've already looked at this month. This was our first month bath we had canceled because again, he was gone. So when we re um, signed up, they told us where we were going and we're so excited to tell you it's Belgium. Are you excited about Belgium? I am excited about Belgium. Now, in all honesty, we have looked through the box because, you know, of all my, my, my food allergies, I needed to. We are very excited about this box, or I'm very excited about this box. Now, do you want to read today, or do you want me to read today? Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> you just want to, you just want to fly by night? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, okay. It works better that way. All right. So, uh, let's just get started. We're going to... Um, taste test and tell you all about them. And if you want any other information about Universal Yums, I'll put their website in the description below and you can always feel free to leave comments and ask questions. Here we go. Do you want to start off with the trivia? I want to start off with the trivia. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. Well, that one's easy. We're not doing that one. Uh, Are you sure? <laughs> yes, Belgium's national language. Yeah, what is it? That one's easy. What's it say? It's like all of them. Oh. Except for Belgium, because that's not a language. Sure. Did yeah. you get the answer? No, I didn't. It says oh. um, A, B, and C. That's right. Belgium has not one, not two, but three languages. And not one of them is Belgium. It only takes a quick look at the map to understand why. Belgium... Belgium is almost entirely bordered by Germany, France, and the Netherlands. In fact, prior to the founding in 1830, parts of the region traded hands between those three countries multiple times. But don't worry, you don't need to learn all three languages to visit. Just remember that Dutch is north, French is south, and German is reserved for the east campus. Okay. Okay, moving on. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Number two. Belgium produces over 600 tons of what? per year. A, chocolate, B, waffles, C, beer, or D, Brussels sprouts. And I do not know the answer. I'm going to go with chocolate. Ding, ding, ding. You would be right. You read that right. 600 tons. That's over 100 pounds of chocolate for every person in Belgium. Nice. That's insane. That's a lot of chocolate. I didn't All right. beer, by the way, because I don't think beer is categorized in tons. It would have been gallons or something like that. So, <laughs> otherwise my guess would have been beer. <laughs> gotcha. All right. We're going to go in order of the fancy booklet. So, the booklet gives you a little bit of what each thing is, just because sometimes you don't know what you're getting. All right. So, creme brulee bonbons, babe. Right here. Okay. Uh, one thing to know about Belgium before digging in is that it's made up of fascinating and delectable blend of French, Dutch, and German culture. For our first stop, we're headed to the French region. Here you'll find plenty of traditional French dishes. Prime example, look no further than these creme brulee bonbons. All the sweet, custardy, caramelized flavor of the traditional French delicacy. Ooh, I'm excited about these. I feel like these are going to be my favorite, so I wish they would last, but we'll go in order. I'm a little surprised that they are flat with all of that packaging. I'm wondering if the Florida weather didn't destroy the bonbons. I don't know if you can tell. They're very flat. I don't think this is probably how they were intended to be. That would we surprise shall see. me. Yeah. We shall see. There's a lot of packaging here for... A chunk of chocolate at the well, bottom. It looks like they were touching at one point. Before. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking uh, Florida Heat got our bonbons. And, uh, oh, they're very soft. Oh. This could be interesting. We might need a spoon to scoop these out of here because they are. Oh, oh here we go. One. 
You wanted to share one so we don't, since we got that one? Hell no, I'm eating my own. <laughs> I don't know why I did that all the way. Yeah, they're very gooey. Um, they look like peanut butter cups. They kind of look like peanut butter cups, but I'm thinking something okay. smashed. Mm. So I'll start. These are really delicious. The only thing I would say is the cream is kind of grainy, kind of sandy. Yep. But the chocolate and and the cream taste is delicious. As a matter of fact, show them the book because they aren't supposed to be flattened like this. I'm, I'm almost certain heat got to these at some point. There's they also don't look like that on the box. The boxes got them much more poofy. So still, I'm, still delicious. I'm not a big um, fan of creme brulee, but yeah, this is okay. The chocolate is very melty, so it's a very fatty chocolate. The cream, like I said, is kind of grainy, but it's also it's very um, brown sugary. Sort of, yeah. Uh, what would you rate these? Rate these on a scale of one to five. I'd give them a three and a half. And I would give them a four. I thought those I were think that, very, that very brown good. Brown sugar taste might be the way creme brulee is kind of a. Uh, cooked and burned a little bit the napkin, on the tops um, and that uh, I think that contributes to the flavoring that you're getting in uh, in these that seems a little more brown sugary but I, I bet you it's it's the way you they they use the flame on the creme brulee to make oh could be all right what else is in here oh okay this is really interesting so there is a recipe for meatballs the meatballs sound very much like anything that we would make. However, they are served on top of French fries, which is different for us. I've never had, have you ever had meatballs served on fries? I've had meatballs, I think, on mashed potatoes before, so I don't know if it'd be too different, but I've never had meatballs served on fries. Let me know if you've had meatballs served on fries. Other than that, seems very much like anything we'd fix, although the sauce that they put on there has brown sugar, sugar, red wine vinegar, and apple butter in it. So that's different too. All German. sounds delicious though. German maybe? Yeah, maybe. German. All right, let's see what is next. Ham and Gouda biscuits. This one, I'm a little hesitant about only because I don't know about ham flavoring. What's the package look like then? Okay, so you just, okay. Let's see what it says. Uh, a taste of Belgian history. As far back as the Middle Ages, Belgium has been a nation of cheese lovers. And you may be surprised to learn that the tra tradition st started in a monastery. Oh. And the monasteries and abbeys of medieval Belgian, Belgium, one of the many duties performed was making cheese and beer. The tradition continues to this day with more than 80 varieties of cheese made across the country. Though most of it is made outside the monastery now, try these super crumbly ham and gouda bites all right let's go bed shouldn't you have been opening these while i was reading you would have yelled you at me for the crinkly are paper. following you are following you're following you are falling on the job bub you would have been yelling <laughs> it would have been crinkly why, you can... you, why are you crinkling while i'm talking oh look at these little biscuits oh oh oh, oh. it came apart didn't it yes just it... like all the others it completely fell apart. Yep. So um, they're very, they're very well, fragile. Well, it said crumbly. Try these super crumbly. I didn't realize that it was a crumbly as it says they're super crumbly. All right. Oh. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, hand me, hand me. I love them. I love mm -mm, them. Hand me that napkin, please. Oh my goodness. They're not bad. Kind of like a ham flavored mm -mm. gouda. Cheese it. <laughs> I did not like those. Um, these were great. I'll eat the crap out of these. I'll eat all of them. Um, I'm going to rate that a one. It's immediately like this very, to me, very weird artificial ham flavoring. I didn't taste hardly any cheese, but I, I again, it was pretty much like this wham of ham ham. <laughs> ham in the face uh, yeah yeah and um I, that was not for me um nope, it tastes like one of those high-end salty hams that you get maybe uh juto um 
with Gouda cheese. I got it all. I, I thought they were great. All right. Five out I of think, five. No. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I can tell where who's going to eat that. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, I think we need another trivia. Yeah. <laughs> I need a drink of water. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Belgium holds the world's record for longest what? A, don't be looking. Hey, look at Speech. B, time out without a government. Time without a government, sorry. C, French fry. D, time spent sitting at a bar. A. Number three. Eh, you would be wrong. Interesting. Number three is... Uh, B, time without a government. If we had a nickel for every time Belgium broke a record for not having government, we'd have two nickels. It's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. The first time was in 2010 when 11 parties were elected to the Chamber of Representatives with none of them representing more than 20% of the seats. Interesting. I, I yeah, I interesting. I wonder how well it would fly over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. What is next? I got to get this ham taste out of my mouth, y'all. I got to. Cranberry rye cake. All right, he's pulling that out. Let me see what it looks like. I think this is it. Cranberry rye cake. It says, a bite of Belgian breakfast. Ready for breakfast? Put down the toast and break out the rye cake. Some word that I'm not going to even attempt to say is like a cross between cake and bread with made with rye flour, honey, and sometimes additions like spices and fruit. This version adds dried cranberries for a tart flavor that cuts through the dense taste of honey and rye. All right, babe. I think it looks like toast. It looks like Melba toast. But it's very soft. Oh. So you can see the edging and the actual bread. And then it's, it's got the bottom there, and it, I guess they just cooked this in one big long line. So, kind of pulls apart like a soft bread. Ooh, it smells very cranberry. Yep. I actually like this way more than I thought I would. It looks very dry and when you look at it, but it is not. Mm -mm. It is very chewy, and I can taste the honey. Honey, rye, cranberry, it's all in there. Yeah, it looks very spongy and very dry, but I think the honey makes it well, very, sticky. no, but it makes it very like chewy, almost like the honey crystallized. Mm -hmm. It's just well mixed in. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was good. I like yeah. those. Yeah, what would you rate that? give it a four me too i think i would give it a four wow that's my most surprising for sure so far yeah all right let's see what we have next violet gummies let me see right. violet gummies big violet sticker right on the front all right I'm it says gummies. it so. says chew gummies with a floral aroma Ever wonder what a flower tastes like? No, just mm. us? Well, you're about to find out anyway. If you're like some of the people in our office, you'll be slowly transported to the grand place in Brussels, where intricate flower carpets envelop the city center. Fragrant flowers fill your senses as you reach for another violet gummy. Oh boy. I think Kevin's really looking forward to this. It kind of smells like grapes. It's, it's like just a gummy a gummy drop, so mm -hmm. I don't like them either. Nope. Somebody stuck a flower in my mouth. Yeah. Um it's my too much like if you accidentally got soap in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> as a practical joke one time somebody took uh, perfume and they sprayed it into the mouthpiece of my telephone receiver at work. And that's what this is reminding me of. There's a traumatic experience of. Mm. <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> Give me the water. <laughs> Give me the water, huh? 
<laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of people that love that. I just, it, it like I said, it, it reminded me too much of soap or like you said, perfume or something like that. It's just not for me. And maybe if it wasn't as strong, but it's very florally. All right. Uh, next step, we're going to do some trivia when Kevin tries to recover. You ready? I need a Are you... arrow or something. Well, we're doing these next, so okay. that'll be good. Are Maybe. you ready? Yeah, that's right. The Royal Palace of Brussels is decorated with half a million... Violets. Blank. <laughs> a, diamonds. <laughs> B, bugs. C, puppets. Or D, beer steins. Let it be puppets. Let it be puppets. <laughs> I'm going to go with beer steins, but I know that's not right. Okay, number four. B, bugs. Bugs. All right. Fun fact. I don't know. The person who writes this trivia, hello, likes to often include at least one animal fact and one nightmare fact. Say hello to this month's nightmare fact. At least if you're not a fan of bugs. Back in 2002, the Queen of Belgium invited an artist to decorate the Palace Hall of Mirrors. The artist visioned a long strip of iridescent green along the ceiling and the hall's chandelier. But he didn't do this with paint, but with half a million beetles from Thailand. Mm -hmm. It's both beautiful and a bit creepy at the same time. Yeah. It sounds, yeah. All right, some interesting facts about Belgium. I didn't know, yeah, interesting. All right, let's see what is up next. Um, Andalous? Andalous. Andalous sauce potato chips. Oh, sorry, babe, go ahead. Andalusian sauce. You are not holding it where anybody can see oh, it. Oh, food. There you there go. There we go. Andalusian sauce, potato chips. Basically, it's a pepper and tomato based condiment that they use over there. I had to look um, up Andalus to make sure there was no coconut in it because she goes to the hospital on coconut. And uh, yeah, it's uh, so I read all about it. So this is obviously a France thing. All right, let's see what it says. Okay. Let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, these chips are technically technically made in France, but the flavor is 100% Belgian. It may come as a surprise, but French fries were actually invented in Belgium. And their favorite way to dip them, creamy and loose sauce made from mayonnaise, tomato paste, and roasted red peppers. All right, let's do it. There's so much I need to get out of my mouth right now. The floral is yeah. not mixing with the ham, y'all. <laughs> I mean. It's horrific. I, it's a terrible, missed. terrible combination. Just a rich potato chip. Mm. That's a weird flavor. Not bad, but weird. Like vinegar, ketchup. The There's um, some spice at the very beginning that's kind of really strong that I'm not that I can't quite put my finger on. Um, I don't know. Ooh, that might be too big. So this is what it tastes like to me. It tastes like tomato ketchup chips that also have some other spices mixed onto it. Almost like a a salt and vinegar with a tomato flavor is kind of where and I got a little punchy heat on one of those chips. So I know there's pepper included in, like peppers included in this type of sauce. So I didn't get a lot of heat. Just, I'm just, getting some. Just enough to kind of give you the, hmm, there might be something in there. What do you rate these? I'm going to give these a three, I think. Yeah, I'll give them three and a half, four, something like that. Okay. All right. Ooh, raspberry dark chocolate bar. This is the one I'm most excited about besides the very first creme brulee one. So they got it upside down. Whoa. Well, that was a catch. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's how we do things around here. Put it on the floor first. Filled with creamy chocolate ganache. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this one. This Ever wonder? Melt. This did not melt. This is good in salad. Yeah. 
Ever wonder what it's uh, what it is that makes Belgian chocolate so good? Well, it'd be weird of us to offer a Belgian box and not explain why that is. It's all about the process. While your average American chocolate is milled to 30 micron, microns, 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 sure. sure. Belgium chocolate takes it a step further, milling it down to 18. Below the point of being detected on taste buds. That's why when you bite into the dark chocolate, the first thing you'll notice is how smooth it is. Oh, I'm excited about this one. All right, time to take the panties off. Did, did, is there a golden ticket in there? There is no golden ticket. <laughs> what a letdown. All right, so it all comes out in one bar like this. Holy right moly. So, and it's already melting in my fingers. And it's gooey. Ooh, look at the inside of that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's really good. Doesn't taste like violence at all. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna want more of these. Oh my god. I get it. No, I'm closing it. No, you're not. You're gonna break it. Do you hear this? <laughs> I'm, I'm closing it because you will eat. You are going to want to eat more of it. Look, it's closed. It's closed. That was really good. Really good. I would rate that a five. Yep. Really good. The chocolate on it is extremely good. The one thing I will say, if I were to take off points, there wasn't a big raspberry flavor. Oh, I got it right away. Raspberry and chocolate, right? In bang. I don't know what you're talking about. I can you taste the red. or something. <laughs> See what I put up with all the time? <laughs> that was, that's a good chocolate bar. It was a that's good chocolate bar. It was a 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 good chocolate bar. Okay. Going back um, I'm going back to the <laughs> trivia. Who's doing the book? Is Come it on. you? Is it you or me? It's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I take it away. <laughs> Over 1,000 types of blank are made throughout Belgium. A, cheese, B, chocolate, C, beer, or D, waffles. Over 1,000 types of what? Of blank are made throughout Belgium. Throughout Belgium. Cheese, chocolate, beer, waffles. Waffles. It's beer. All right. One thousand types. Right. Wow, one thousand types. Okay, it says even though Belgium is a small nation, it pulls more than double its weight in beer production. Since the country is composed of so many different cultures, it's only natural that brewing techniques would vary from region to region. Well, but what's truly surprising is that each and every one of these brews comes with its own unique glass that is served in. One thing beer drinkers across the country do have in common: shouting. Something. What is this? Cheers! Oh, looks like Sante. Yeah. I'm assuming it means cheers. And whatever. It, yeah, it looks like Sante. So they shout Sante before you drink. Okay. We might be saying that wrong. I All right. Try Belgium. We might have to travel with Belgium. That's all I'm saying. I'm just stopping. Every garage apparently has a beer brewery in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna take a beer tour. Okay. Get on the Marty's place. He's got the best schnapps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Cheddar biscuits. Cheddar biscuits. What does the bag look like? This. You got it. Okay. Airy, cheesy, crumbly crackers. When we first Remember visited. How good it went. <laughs> When we first visited Belgium back in 2017, one of our favorite snacks that we tried were cheesy biscuits from Noble Foods. They were so good that we begged them, yes, literally begged, to let us be the first company to bring them to the U.S. So when they came out with these airy, crumbly, and addictive cheddar biscuits, we knew right away that we had to include them in this box. These are breaking apart just as easily as the other one, so they're just, they look like the the, what do they call them? The Starlight Mints or yes, whatever that you... Yes, but as a cracker. Yeah. 
Very buttery. They're very, I do like them, but they're way more buttery than cheesy. Still very good. Uh, the aftertaste has a little more cheese tone. Hand me one more. But um, I do, I do think they're more buttery than cheesy. The second one is a little more cheesy. Those are good. Yeah. I would give those a four. Yep. So you can have the other, the ham biscuits and all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next up is something I can't have, so we're gonna have to rely on Kevin's taste buds, which you can obviously mm -hmm. very, see is very different from mine. So um, this should prove to be interesting. While he is getting them open, I'm gonna tell you about them. They're Speculose Spice Cookies. Right there. <laughs> Extra crispy with a cinnamon bite. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> All the time, y'all. All the time. Uh, but, but, but it says, if this cookie seems familiar, that's no surprise. Belgium's favorite spice cookies are popular all over the world with versions popping up in the Netherlands, Germany, and even Indonesia. Each version uses a different balance of spices, but our opinion, the original Belgian version reigns supreme. They look like railroad tracks. They look like railroad tracks. <laughs> All right, while he's opening them and trying them, I'm going to pepper him with trivia, shall we? Oh, well, he's done now. They're road tracks. I wonder what that's for. It's a very dry cookie, so it is absolutely a dry cookie. Um, I'm having a hard time putting my finger on exactly what spices are in there. I'm not really a connoisseur like of that sort, but reminds me of the pinwheel cookies. Not the pinwheels. The windmill cookies. Those almond cookies that you get. They're kind of spiced like that without the almond chips in there. So. Are they dry like a biscotti? Yeah. They're very, very dry, but they crumble easily. A lot of. They'd probably be really good with coffee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once you get done, I want to know what you would rate those. I'll give those a five for them. Just on the cookie and the flavor. Wow. That's pretty good. Of course, I can't try a five. Ugh. All right, here we go. You ready? Yep. Need a late night snack? Stop by a vending machine and grab some A, carrots, B, gourmet chocolate, C, frozen waffles, or D, potatoes. Vending machines, carrots, gourmet chocolate, frozen waffles, or potatoes for your late night snack. Hmm. I'm say waffles. No? Potatoes. Belgian waffles. Belgian waffles. You would think they would have them in a vending machine. <laughs> Frozen Belgian waffles in a vending machine? Well, you know, I think that sounds weird, but potatoes as well. So here we go. Potatoes. Have you ever been sitting around the house when all of a sudden you're hit with a powerful craving that only can french fries can satisfy? Unfortunately, it's midnight and these all the stores are closed. Darn it. But wait. If you live in rural Belgium and can take a stroll down to your nearest potato vending machine mm. and make them yourself. Will the wonders of technology never cease? So not only can you get them from the vending machine, but you can cook them there. And then you got hot fries. Wow. We need that in the United we do, States. We do, do kind of need that. Although I feel like most fast food restaurants are now open 24 hours. Yeah, a lot of them probably. Although a lot of them have cut hours too. Well, the other thing is... Interesting. That, uh, yeah, well, that I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay. Oh, they don't have cars in Belgium as much. You, 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 car ownership, individual car ownership is not as prolific as it is here in the United States. So maybe you need to be able to walk to the yeah. vending machine to Makes sense. get your fries. Makes sense. All right. Ooh, next up, I don't think you're going to like this. Yeah, it's okay. melon hard candies. Oh, you're failing on your job, Kevin. They're different colors. Well, yeah, because it's cantaloupe and honeydew. Oh. I told you you're not going to like it. Nope. 
Okay. You so, didn't see my face. <laughs> if you didn't, you did not. But let's just say he's not going to like it. Um, no. You're about to taste a 125-year-old family tradition. You're no. about to taste a 125-year-old family tradition. Get that look off your face. <clears throat> it says, um, Cocopa, the company that makes these super fruity candies, started all the way back in 1895 as a family bakery. Fast forward to today, and they're making even more sweet treats like marzipan violet gummies, the ones in the box. Mm, yeah, I saw that. Um, and these melon candies. But even with their growth, they're still spreading all their sugary goodness with only 10 employees? How? I took a green one. You took a, okay, I'll take an orange one then because he took a green one. And they look just like hard gummies with powdered sugar. Yeah, this is a hard candy. Very much tastes like a cantaloupe. Yeah, the honey is coming through now. And it's not that I don't like it. I can't have it naturally because for whatever reason it upsets my stomach terribly. So there's an aversion to the taste. Um, I really like it. It's not overpowering, overpowerful. It is more sugary than melony. You can get the melon and <laughs> Kevin's done with this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's look at the sticker for Belgium. So each month you get a sticker and the book that I was showing you. And then you also get a map with different fun facts. Like Brussels. Visit Brussels. Uh, visit Belgium's capital to see the most popular attraction in the country. It's a work of modern art constructed in 1958. And, it, um, and each dome includes various exhibits and even a restaurant. But here, hold on. I want to real quick read you this one. See this? Does it look like chocolate? Because it is. It's a chocolate museum. The largest Belgian chocolate museum in the world. At Chocolate Nation, you can learn how chocolate is made from bean to bar, or you could just nibble on the raspberry dark chocolate bar in your box. Yeah, I want to visit. I get to eat it. Oh. <laughs> I want to visit the chocolate museum. Okay, I need to take mine out just so we can try the. Oh, I don't need to because I can't try the very last thing. So we have one more thing, but I cannot try it because of allergies. And it's the one I'm most disappointed about. Show them all. It looks delicious. It's another chocolate, which, oh, it's extra street sweet with a dusting of cocoa. It says Belgian chocolate. Once you hear those words spoken together, you immediately know that you're about to indulge in some serious luxury. I know, and I can't have that. But that's only because the industry itself is highly regulated. Uh, in fact, you can't even call something chocolate unless it contains at least 35% at least cocoa solids. I think the Florida heat got these two. I can feel like one big humongous lump in the midst of our chocolates. While he's doing that, as Stupid I was saying. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? Maybe. Maybe not. It has like a crossword for Belgium. How well do you know Belgium? This was going to be so Interesting. good. Interesting. Okay. This was going to be so good, people. But Florida got it. Florida has destroyed the Belgian buttercream truffles. Oh, I'll my gosh. I'll show you why. That's what happened to my truffles. <clears throat> Stupid Florida. Let me just say, let me just say that when we knew this box was was being delivered, we almost immediately went and picked it up. Oh, it's so, gonna be good chocolate too, man. I got it all over my fingers just opening the bag. We um we almost immediately went and picked it up from our from our mailbox. Yeah, it did not take um, very long. So it did that. Yeah, that's what I was the point I was making. And it was, was about eighty degrees outside when we went and did it. Yeah, and it's that's, still... that's the thing with this chocolate is it is so high end and fatty that it just it just melted everything. Everything this chocolate has been slightly heat, except for the except for the bar. The except bar for the bar, the bar shape. held its shapes, but these other two, these truffle things, nope, they ain't making it. All right, I do want to show you. These, so the other thing was it has some really cool facts. It like there's a festival um, of lights 
it says a small flower carpet festival. You won't want to miss this flowery festival. Every year, locals wave intricate flower carpets based on a different theme. Isn't that cool? Here's the picture. I think that is really amazing. Okay, because Kevin was insistent that he had to try the chocolate because I knew he was going to be, he went and got himself a spoon because he is bound and determined to try the chocolate. And it comes out like a marshmallowy. There's the top of the melt. <laughs> and at the bottom, you can see the white stuff sticking. I guess that's a buttercream. But uh, yeah, so I've adapted and overcome. Mm, it smells delicious. It smells delicious. And I am not a big fan of buttercream, but that is amazing. I'm glad I got a spoon. Because that is really good. Wow. Yeah. What would you rate that? That's five. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, two things before we hop off. One, what was your favorite thing in the box? I actually liked everything but the vi the violet. The, the gummies had to go. I can't, I can't do the gummies or the hard candy. Those two things, but everything else is at least a four or a five. So I think my favorite thing in the box was the uh, chocolate raspberry bar. It, the chocolate was seriously delicious. It was great. They, um, there was a couple of things I didn't like, but taking the cake for most disliked would definitely be the ham, uh, the ham and cheese. I, it was, yeah, did not care for the flavor of that. But overall, I would say Belgium is a success, 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 holy crap. You can say the word. <laughs> okay. Success. Success. Thank you. Same monopoly. Are you done? <laughs> I want to know after you're yeah. done making fun of me. Yeah. yeah. Where do you think we're going next? There was no hint. It is a blind, blind stab. guess. Blind stab at Japan. I'm going Indonesia. Did we have an Indonesia box? Did we? Or was it Thailand? We had a Thailand box. No, it's Taiwan, I think. I can't remember. I do remember the very hot seaweed, though. Yeah. Remember the hot seaweed? I had yeah. to jump out of the chair and get water because it yeah. was hot. It was hot. It was hot. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. I'm going to Japan. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll join us next month for whatever month, for, or whatever month, whatever country we get. Boy, oh boy, I am tongue-tied today. I'll see you all next time.